now without further ado, yep. it's another episode of Hanging with Gildum with a special guest. Hello, everyone. I'm sure it was just a couple weeks ago that we did this, right? Yeah. About a month. Yeah. Um, so anyways, where's November? She's back on the show, which is great, because I, I don't know when the next time we're going to be able to do anything like this. So, it, it's good to have her on the show again. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so we're just kind of chilling, just kind of building ourselves up again, or well, mainly me, because I'm feeling pretty introverted today. That, that's just my own dilemma, that's my baggage. But you, on the other hand, you're you're... You're just chilling. You're already here. You're you prepared for today, I believe. Yep, I'm prepared. I'm I'm pretty much. I'm just kind of happy to have Easter off. <laughs> hey and man, then, national no, holidays. Normally, well, it's not a national holiday. I don't get paid for today. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> but that's okay. I still get it off. You you should. I should probably mention. Uh, this is not going up today. This is going yeah. up like a week. Yeah. This is this is we're a week behind, but still. I, we, at this t at the time of this recording, it's Easter. Yeah, so you know it was it was last week, but that that's fine. I uh, I need to do one of these recording things. I, I was gonna do something today, but I had technical difficulties, so it, it wasn't able to post. So uh, I, I apologize for that. So this is just like gonna be a massive like update dump just for all you guys, while also just kind of talking about whatever, because you know I, I ramble a lot in this. That's what these are. Just kind of just kind of therapeutic and talking about whatever's on your mind. Sounds good. Yeah. Anything in particular you want to talk about? Yeah, man. My PS4 still isn't here, but by the time of this recording, it should be. So you'll be able to start playing Persona 5? Uh, yeah, and I'll be able to get World of Final Fantasy back up online, which would be great. I would I would very much like to do that. Uh, I'm just focused on Persona right now. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's, that, that just came out, you know? And it's like, I got four games I'm trying to play, and I can't play any of them. And so it's like, I, I'm like super depressed right now. And I did talk about this, like, it, uh, not last week, but like the week before. So it's kind of like, uh, I, I already lamented a lot about like the situation. But at the same time, it's like, it's still on my mind a lot because like I cry about it. Because in a lot of the sense, like I got a new TV and like I talked about this, but it's like when you give a, like a toddler a new toy uh -huh. and they play with it a little bit and then like the parents just take it away. It's not fair, man. I've never had that happen. It's happened to me. I, I I don't know. I'm not saying like I was a bad kid, but it, it's just it feels unfair. It, it's not it's not happy. But I, I digress. That's not the point of me like going about this. It's just me saying like you know hopefully I get I get my PS4 Pro back and that would be great because then I can really experience the full detail of everything as I as I make videos and as I just play my PlayStation 4. In itself and like Persona 5 it's gonna look beautiful and I can't wait to get to it yeah I can't wait for you to get to it either because I it is my world right now yeah which is kind of weird because we talk a lot about Shin Megami Tensei when uh when you're here but I'm fine with it because because it's my primary series I mean like Assassin's Creed took a nosedive after three ah, so. that's fine uh I and mean like before I, anyone gets on my ass about that I, that's my opinion. If you think Assassin's Creed is still great, good for you. As far as I'm concerned, once they start doing yearly um, releases, it just went downhill and just continued to spiral. I gotta be honest. Uh, if if I could say something about Assassin's Creed, I tried playing the first game. I didn't get very far. I just it was too slow for me. Well, to be fair, the first game is pretty slow. That's what uh, a lot of people say. You can play per, uh, not Persona uh, Assassin's Creed Two without playing per, Assassin's Creed One. Um, and you'll still get playing because they're two completely different characters and two completely different stories. That that sounds very familiar, but my brain can't think of what why that sounds familiar. Um, and Ezio is far more entertaining than Alpha. Metal Gear Solid Two. Sorry, it just it just sprung to mind. Metal Gear Solid Two, because everyone everyone was like so let down because you know. It's labeled Metal Gear Solid 2, so you figure it's going to be like a sequel and you get to play a Solid Snake. But then it turns out, you don't. Well, I mean, Assassin's Creed 2 is a sequel to Assassin's Creed 1 in that the the story of Desmond continues. Yeah. But the story of Desmond wasn't overly complex in the beginning, so you can just piece together stuff pretty easily. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it develops from uh, 2 through 3, and by 2 I also mean that includes... 
Brotherhood and um, Revelations. Uh, Revelations was the biggest disappointment. I was so pissed about that. I mean, you, you uh, gotta understand. I don't know too much about the Assassin's Creed because, again, like oh, there, there was I, I'm without like going into full detail. There was this character that had been hinted at for several games for the three previous games. It was it was all leading up to this reveal of this one character. Okay, and so. And he was shrouded in mystery. So it was like this big deal. And I was really excited about it. And then he gets like three 30 second scenes. Mm -hmm. And we don't really get a whole lot of background from him. We don't really get a whole lot of anything from him. So it, 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 was, it was just so built. It was just building itself up and it just came to a letdown. Yeah, and on top of that, Ezio, oh, Ezio in that game, because uh, Assassin's Creed 2 Brotherhood and Revelations all follows uh, the the same assassin. Mm -hmm. And he's um, really old by this time. Uh, he is... He has a great beard. He's... Everything. Just like Mel Gear Solid. And uh, it's... It's just kind of flat. I oh, guess that, is the best way to put it. I mean, that, that, that sounds painful in yeah. a lot of ways. I mean, it's like... It's like you have your hero, right? But then your hero's aged not very well, but at the same time, you know, they're still trying to do it. But you feel bad because it's like, oh, no, he's still in the game past his prime. He, sh he should be in retirement, but they drew him back. And so every time he gets hurt, you just you feel it. Yeah, and then on top of that, the, the ending we get isn't very satisfying. It follows up. Stop it. Uh-oh. Well, just let her bark out before I get you. That's enough. Uh, I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. I apologize if there's just any random cuts in the audio. Uh, we we're having some puppy issues, but at the same time, it, it, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the, you got a dog. Yes. Yes, and I do. She, and she, she's she, a loud dog too. She's she's very vibrant. You know, she's very vocal, but at the same time, I I don't mind it. it it's like dogs do what they do. Um. I like animals. She likes talking, too. Yeah. Uh, so, Ezio's at the end. You don't even really get that satisfying an ending of an ending with Ezio. It comes in the form of a continuation video mm -hmm. that you have to download and you need a special fucking player for it. It was bullshit. Um, but he ends up... Do you care about spoilers? No. Well, I mean, I, you, got, you gotta understand. I'm never gonna go into Assassin's Creed. Okay. Uh, mainly because... I know if I'm gonna do it, I'm I'm gonna be super anal retentive and be like, I have to play the first one so I can move on to the second one. And everyone tells me, no, dude, just just forget, it. just go to the second one. It's a lot more action packed. It's a lot more just what you want to do as an assassin. It's basically the game that you want to play. Just start with that one. Forget the first one. It's like, but dude, the plot involves the first game and then it's a continuation. That's why it's the sequel. Uh. Well, at the end of the the little movie thing, basically has um, Ezio with a family and a child. I don't remember whether it was his or whether he adopted it from with the woman. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like the woman's kid, and he adopted it. I don't remember which it is, but it's one of those. And uh, they're in the street, and he has something. All he has a nice family life with, which you've always kind of wanted for him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, like, as a hopeless romantic, I mean, that, that really warms the cockles in my heart. Uh, unfortunately, though, he's killed in the square. No! If, if memory serves, you, there, uh, a man comes up to him, and I remember they have a discussion, and then next thing you know, he's dead, and his child is screaming, and his wife is sobbing. Oh, it reminds me of the ending to Mafia, which is a game I plan to lust play at some point, but at the same time, like, same same exact vibe in every way, except uh, the ending to that, I, I don't know if you care about spoilers. No, I don't care. Okay. Uh, well, the ending to the first game, at least, because I know there's sequels. I haven't played any of them, but I, I, I'm getting off topic. The ending to that game, basically, he's an old man, and he's just, like, watering his lawn or, like, flowers, or he's washing his car. I don't remember, but I, I remember, uh, basically, the people that were in the, mo like, in the mafia that he was in, because he kind of escaped. He kind of yeah, just went he, off the he, grid. He and, deserted. Yeah, he deserted. He didn't want any part of that, because, you know, he, he had a wife, and he wanted to start a family. He wanted to do, like, the thing that the guy... Yeah. 
squad was doing, but, you know, the mafia, they found him, they tracked him down, and then they shot him, just in cold blood. Yeah. And that's the ending, and it's like, oh, that that's so sad. I mean, it's fitting. I, I can't lie. It, it, it's very, it's very poetic. And then, uh, I was actually willing to take that from Revelations, because I kind of felt like Ezio's story had gone on too long anyway. Mm-hmm. So it was just, and it was, if memory serves, Revelations was done by the B team. For Assassin's Creed, gotcha. So you know you can you can allow some leniency there. Mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed Three was shit. I fucking hated that. Aww. I hated the assassin. I hated the gameplay. I hated everything about that. I hated the environments. You know how part of, half the fun of Assassin's Creed is being able to jump from rooftop to rooftop. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you don't get that. What? Yeah. You know, the houses are too far apart to even really do an effective jump from rooftop to rooftop. Oh, that, that is just do, unfair. Doing stealth anything is a hell of a lot harder. Like, They're impossible I, I, I guess it, it might be aimed for the hardcore gamers, but it just it doesn't seem fun. I even, mean, Even if it's aimed at the hardcore gamers, then there should be an easier... If memory serves, I don't think there was um, a difficulty level okay. thing. So there should have at least been that, so that way... You, people who want more of a casual experience because mm-hmm. when i'm first playing through a game i don't give a shit about being hardcore i want to see the story first no I, I completely understand i mean like really when it comes down to it, it's like you know you don't think the small things matter but they do yeah a lot i mean like take for instance when i play world of warcraft as stupid as it is i like pressing the space bar which makes the character jump why? Because, I don't know, it's one of those small details that, that's very fun and entertaining. Like, you're yeah. just walking and you gotta break up the monotony. Sure, it, it's not really helping the situation, but on the inside, it feels like it. So, you know, you got that. I feel like in Assassin's Creed, the fun thing is scaling roof to roof. Yes. You know, just, just going and doing, you know, basically being an assassin. Yeah. It, it feels awesome, you know. It, it's one of those small things that really helps break up the monotony. And it, I feel and, like... And it's espe- so- Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I insist. And it's so deceptive because in the very first stage of the game, you're given that opportunity to scale and be oh. really stealth, and it was really awesome. I was just going to say, that's one of those small things that I feel like you, you got to have. Like, you're used to you expect it. Yeah. And then they take it away, and it's like, how is this fair to me as the gamer, as the player? It's, it's not. It I isn't. can't do, like, the basic thing that helps me break up the monotony that I'm having fun with. It's sad. I, I don't know. That, that's all I really have to say about it. It's just, like... It, I, I'm just saying, I like the small things. They're, they're, the small details, they just make you be like, okay, you know, I can keep going. I can go through this long, grinding corridor of bullshit. Yeah, and, like, for instance, with Persona, I played... My first time through with Persona 5, I played it on easy mode because I didn't want to, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time grinding to get levels up so that way I can get past the bosses and stuff. Gotcha. I don't really want to think about it the first time through. I want to just enjoy the story. Yeah. And I mean, that that's how it was when I played Kingdom Hearts. Like, I play on normal, but uh, for some reason, and I cannot explain why, uh, I, I usually play it, but then I'll go on proud mode. Or sometimes I'll just go to proud mode. It's not even like I'm trying to prove a point here. It's just like, I don't know. I feel like I'm a veteran when it comes to like that kind of stuff. But at the same time, it's like, you know, Kingdom Hearts, you're trying to dwell into the story, which, let me tell you, it's it's gotten pretty convoluted. I don't know about yeah, you. No, it's, it's needlessly complicated. Like, we're... I, I think you and I, I both I agree. I don't even really think they understand where they're going at this point. I, I, you know, at this point, maybe they do, but it's lost on me. Yeah. I, I was just going to say... Uh, where I think it stopped being entertaining, where it just got too complex, is when they introduced Birth by Sleep. Yeah, Birth by Sleep ruined it. And I mean, like... I know a lot of people love Birth by Sleep. I did not care for it. I mean, like, you know, you're you're entitled to your own opinion, and I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing. But I, I know someone out there is surely being like, you said, what about my favorite game? Yo, that's Birth by Sleep, dog. It's, it's like, how dare you? I'm gonna shoot you. I, I will say that Birth by Sleep was not the worst. And uh, three and not in terms of gameplay anyway. Birth by Sleep was fine with gameplay. The gameplay mm, is the issue that I I'm I'm I got one complaint. What? Uh that that's the redundancy of playing through it three times with each different no, character. No, I'll agree with that. That was That was bullshit. Yeah. Okay, let me tell you something. Aqua 
most useless character ever. No, I agree. I, I'm not I, saying that you don't need, like, you can't include her. I'm saying, you know, switch up her gameplay. She's the most boring character to play as. Not, not only that, but let's just face it, Square, uh, the, not Square Enix, but um, Kingdom Hearts doesn't do females very well. No, and you know what the real shame about it is? I would love a strong female, like, Keyblade wielder. I think it would be great. Yeah. But, like, Kyrie, Aqua, not the answer for it. No. We I, need a badass, man. We yeah. need someone who can, like, be really quick, kind of like uh, Ventus. You know, because, yeah. like, that was his whole thing. He was quick, but he was, like, he, he did, like, amazing combos. And I get what they were trying to go for Aqua. Like, she's a magic user. But it's like, why don't, why don't we get, like, some sort of hybrid, like, quick, like, combo magic user? I think yeah. that would be kind of interesting, and you know? And someone with a personality, because let's face it, neither Kyrie nor Aqua have much of a Dude, personality. they're super Mary Sue, except they I are. think Aqua is less so, because, you know, Kyrie, she, being a princess of light, uh, she only has light in her heart. That That's like the yeah. whole trope about being a princess of light. That, that whole princess of light thing, though, kind of stopped mattering after the first game, which I was disappointed about. I, I got a question. It's always bugged me. What? So, like... You got seven princesses of light, right? Right. That, that's what they established. Uh, what happens when they grow up and like they're queens? Does does their daughter like inherit it, or is it like there? It's a constant thing where like a, a new person is chosen. And I think the idea is is um, with Disney logic is that they stay princesses forever. What I mean? Yeah. I, uh, sure. But I'm D just saying, like you Disney know. Disney has actually a rule. That princesses are good and queens are evil. I mean, uh, fair enough. I was just going to say, so, like, I, I got another question. Like, Princess Jasmine. Uh -huh. uh, her love, like, you know, Aladdin is totally, like, trying to marry that. Right. Uh, in, in the movie series, obviously, he does, because, you know, there's Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Right. Uh, and I'm sure they're going kind of in that direction in Birth by or in Kingdom Hearts. My bad, I'm, I'm so focused on Birth by Sleep. I was just gonna say, so given enough time, and maybe, maybe not. I don't even know at this point. It doesn't even matter. I'm just gonna say, like, given enough time, like maybe that'll happen. You know, Jasmine will marry Aladdin, and you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But like, what happens then? Because you know, she is she still a princess of light? Like, I mean, probably, but at the same time, it's like. They'll have a kid together, right? And eventually, like, you know, the Princesses of Light, they age. Because, uh, as far as I know, it's not like they're restricted to, like, that kind of logic. You Do you want my honest opinion? Yes. I don't think that Disney thought that far through. I, I don't... I, I think you're right. I don't, I don't think there is an answer to it, because I don't think they thought past the game. I, I think they're going to make some sort of weird exception. Like, it's, it's just going to come in. It's, it's going to be like, I disagree, but it doesn't matter because it's now canonical. There, yeah. There's no point, like, arguing against it, because, you know, uh, Square, like, whoever's in charge of the storyboard there, they're like, this, this is what happens, that, that's it, this, this is Kingdom Hearts, yeah. don't like it, get the fuck out. I'm, I'm actually pretty sure that they're never gonna address it. Oh, probably not. I mean, there, there's so many open-ended questions, like, for instance, why is the Versa thing? Why can't anyone else do it? Can anyone else do it? Because I feel like it's not an exclusive thing to Vanitas. I feel I, like, given the same circumstances, someone else can do it. Why were, and uh, since we're following unanswered questions, why was Sora, I mean, I understand that he had two hearts resting with no, him. No, he had like three. Yeah, three hearts, sorry. Yeah, three he had like Kyrie, uh, Ventus, and his own. Yeah, so, actually he might have had more, I, I don't even know, but the point is, uh, yeah, he had multiple hearts. So that, so... Roxas was Sora's nobody, even though he looked like Ventus because Ventus. Yeah, was and I'm hard. pretty sure you but could. But Sora's memories ended up becoming personified in Shion. Yeah. I don't really understand why that. Well, happened. Shion was like a replica. She was she was like a failed replica. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. She uh, Riku, like replica Riku, was like the perfected version of that. Right. Um, as for Roxas. I think the idea is because it's Sora's nobody, but uh, I also think it's supposed to be reflective of Ventus in a lot of ways to the point where I think even a part of Ventus was 
in that. I mean, not just like a parents. I think his heart actually got kind of put in there somewhere. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I'm, yeah, no, I'm just Ventus, speculating here. Ventus's heart took refuge in Sora's heart. I remember that. Yeah, and I think like when, you know, he, he stabbed himself with Riku's like Keyblade. Yeah, then that released the hearts. Yeah, and I think like because, you know, Roxas is Sora's nobody, I think uh, like the like Ventus or like some of his essence got like carried over there. So it's kind of like it's not really Sora's nobody per se, even though it is. It, it's really complicated. It, it's I don't know if it's complicated or just poorly thought out. It, it's compli It's needlessly complicated that it's so poorly thought out. It's a hybrid. I, I just... I'm disappointed with where Kingdom Hearts has gone, I guess. Uh, and you know what? You want to know what the real shocker is? I'm going to play Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, but totally. at this point, it's it's more of a curiosity. It's not like I'm rooting for it. It's not like I'm going to be like, Yay, Kingdom Hearts 3. It's going to be like, okay, what could I bitch and complain about now? I'm not actually looking to bitch and complain. I'm looking for some fucking answers. Oh, I'm... I'm I, well, you know the thing is... You know what I've, I've heard? You know what I've... Like, it's supposed to be? This is supposed to be the last... Ep episodic thing with Master Xehanort. Like, after this, they're moving on to something else. Although, granted, God forbid I know how m like, they're gonna have so many spinoffs that it's gonna make your head spin. I already predict- Honestly, after, after Xehanort, I will probably stop. Unless yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stop. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm done after Kingdom Hearts 3. I don't care if there's any spinoffs. Uh, I said Birth by Sleep kind of killed it for me, although there is that one spin-off with Roxas. And I hear that one's pretty good, because, you know, it adds enough. 358 over two days. Yes, that one. No, 358 over two days was shit. Really? Yes, I fucking hated it. The That is actually my most hated game more than Birth by Sleep. Really? Yes, because... Wow. The If if I'm allowed to, like... Just... No, you're absolutely allowed to. So, first of all, the gameplay was absolute bullshit. It was for the DS. The rather than having you know how Kingdom Hearts is semi open world. Yeah. Um, that is not the case with this one. You do not get to go to each world. You can only go based on these little very repetitive missions. I remember that because it was automatically it was automatically laid out for you. You had to go on a mission with like the nobody, like one of your fellow organization members. Yeah. And it was already chosen and it's like, We're going to Atlantica, we're yeah. going to Traverse Town. And and there was like no real link between uh, there was no real connection between any of those missions and the actual story. It was just, you're working for the organization, that's, yeah. all, that's all it was. I mean, like, I think the point was it was trying to give backstory to what the organization does. But they didn't even really do that. A, a little bit, but not yeah. Not really, not given, given what the story was pegged as, they yeah. did not deliver. Yeah. It ended up being more about the mystery of Shion, and... Which is weird. Yeah, the, and the mystery of Shion was not even... 100% answered, in my opinion. I remember there was this part where she loses her ability to summon a Keyblade, yeah. and then it just kind of gets because resolved without really answering it. No, it does answer it. So what it is is that Shion and Roxas uh, are two parts of the same whole. One is Shion is Sora's memories, Roxas is Sora's heartless, or not heartless, uh, nobody. Yeah. So I think there was this one theory, this, this one roundabout that the more Sora was regaining his memories, the less power Shion had. Which so makes sense. So therefore she was losing her ability to summon the Keyblade. Oh, uh, okay. I, I think I see what you're getting at now, because it, it's what bugged me is, like, you know, this is a thing that they brought up, but then it's like, uh, guys, can, can we get an answer for this? But my problem is, since she's like a fell replica, how how is it that, you know, like, Sora and her have, like, this kind of link? Because technically... I figure because, being a replica, they wouldn't. It's just no, like... I actually still have an answer for that. So, you know how um, Sora, when he was going through Chain of Memories, was losing bits of his memories? Oh, yeah, because Nominate was fucking with his mind. Right, right. Yeah. Those memories actually apparently had a physical form that were implanted in Shion okay. to be kind of a holder until so, Sora was ready to get them back. So Nominate them. was, like, basically a result of Shion's creation. Yes. Okay. No, no. Uh, Nominate helped create Shion. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I, I think that's what I was trying to get at. Um, so that's basically what that is. But do you see how convoluted and stupid it was? Did they didn't yes. Even, they didn't even really need... They could have actually done so much better if they had just left Shion out. They could have done so much better if they ended it at Kingdom Hearts 2 and just went with, okay, we're taking Kingdom Hearts in a different direction. New characters. Yes, I, I agree. Because that whole... The whole 
like bonus ending of Kingdom Hearts two, where it basically created a cliffhanger. Yeah, and, and it, 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 cliffhanger. it was a prologue. Yeah. Or it was a prequel. It, it, the it, whole entire thing was a prequel. It's like let's add more bullshit on top of the complexity. Yeah, I actually think that three five eight over two days would have been um, better if they hadn't been trying to extend the storyline and more were just giving a background of Roxas. Yeah. And because the the relationship between Roxas and actual and Axel was actually very satisfying to watch. I mean, like you know, you, you get tidbits of it in like Kingdom Hearts too. You you can tell yeah. that Axel is really hung up on Roxas, and it's even at the beginning in the prologue where you see him getting really frustrated that you know Roxas doesn't understand to the point where when he finally does, Axel doesn't care. He just he's just pissed off. Yeah. And he's just and, like it's too late, Roxas. But but that the three five eight over two days could have done much better if they had actually focused on that friendship. I and think they tried to, but, you know, tried, Xion was Xion. added into it. Yeah. So it was like, it's not just about Axel and Roxas, it's about <laughs> Axel, Roxas, and Xion. And so Xion now we got, a, we got like, a reflected image of Riku, Kairi, and Sora. Yeah, that's that's their big thing, is that they always try to work in levels of threes, and it doesn't always work. No. It didn't work in Birth by Sleep. It, it should have just been two characters. Like, honestly, you asked me, Ventus and Terra. The, the, it should have been I just actually, them. I actually think it could have... I think you could have... Um, Condensed it down, uh, quite frankly, to just Terra without uh, Ventus as a playable character. I mean, yeah, I could see that, but I I'm just saying, like, given given the circumstances of Dream Drop Distance, I think it's all right to kind of have you switch between two different characters. Oh, no, I think Dream Drop point. Distance Dream Drop really Dist added, like, was yeah, was Dream decent. Cause... Dream Drop Distance did did do a, a decent job. I haven't actually played all the way through it, but um, right. what I have played, and don't worry about spoilers, I don't okay. care. Uh, I was going to say, there is one bullshit thing, but I'm not going to tell you. What if is you... it? No, no, tell okay. me. Okay. So the real bullshit thing about Dream Drop Distance that pisses me off, and it has nothing to do with the plot, although that is a whole different can of worms, is the fact that in order to get the really cool dream eaters, uh -huh. like the the ones that you want, you know, your your really awesome Pokemon slash Persona, you gotta play the game again. Are you fucking kidding? Because you know how you get the components, craft the dream eaters to make the really cool ones, and then you go through and you see like a giant T Rex or like skull T Rex, and you're like, oh, I want, I want that. That that is the one I want, and you're like, I'm gonna craft it. You only get so many of those components that it's like, yeah, play the game again. Bitch, it, get, uh, honestly, like, do, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I did not care for the dream eaters. I, I, I mean, like, I'm a sucker for like, you know, I'm like, not big on the whole pet thing. I'm a sucker for the pet thing. That draws me in, like you would not believe. That's why I played Final Fantasy 13 too. And let me tell you, it was not a satisfying thing. But god damn it, they reeled me in with the whole like, you got pets. Come on, you want them? It's like, damn it. You already sold me. Well, Shut since, up and take my money. Since we're on the topic of series that we no longer play, I haven't played Final Fantasy. You haven't? No, oh, fifteen no. was all right. Like if if you're if you're thinking about getting back into it, uh, fifteen was for PS4 though. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that. like if you, I'm just saying, like uh, fifteen at least had a lot of really fun bits to it, but the story was absolute garbage in my opinion. Then or at least like towards it. towards the end. Like you get past chapter eight. Nine had some some alright bits to it, but it's like after chapter eight, the game just takes a real side nosedive because it's on rails for just the plot. And then it just it starts getting bogged down and like all the characters that you love and like how they interact and it was really good up until that point. It it just it's just gets soured. Like all of a sudden, like the tone just like gets really dark. Uh, everyone just starts like lashing out at each other. A lot of shit oh, happens, yeah. so it's like it's understandable. But at Wait, the same you... time, you're just like, no, they were best friends. Now they're like, now there's this thing that kind of like, like sundered their friendship a little bit, and like everyone's all pissed off. If you could compare, if you can compare the character dynamics in uh, Final Fantasy V to any of the other Final Fantasies, which would you? Final Fantasy V. I haven't played Final Fantasy V. Uh, Final Fantasy XV. Oh, sorry. okay. If you could p compare Final Fantasy XV to any of the others. Uh, I gotta think on a second. I gotta think about this for a second. Um, I, I'd have to, I'd have to bring in different characters. Like for instance, you got, you got a, uh, 
Right. You had um, Promptu, who I, I would say is kind of like in the Zell Titus category, which you might not be a fan of, but I, personally I am, because they're the upbeat, lighthearted character. Okay, okay, wait, let me let me interrupt. I'm not asking you to compare individual characters. I'm saying, is there a dynamic similar? Oh. Uh, hmm. Nope. No. I, I mean, like, they're they're pretty diverse in a lot of ways, so, it, and, like, the interaction is really good. Granted, like, it's only four characters, unlike a lot of the other Final Fantasies, where you have a lot of different characters yeah, kind of interacting. Uh, it, it's really just focused on these four characters and how they interact, and they, they feel very much, like, they're they're BFFs. Like yeah, they, they feel like they're friends. Heard, it's like it was bromance the game. It's though. a very bromance the game sort of situation, and I can't really compare it to a lot of uh, Final Fantasies, except maybe Final Fantasy IV when you have Cecil and Kane. Okay. Like so the, their friendship. Let, let me ask you: Is the story itself disappointing? Uh yes. I, I I would say it's very disappointing in the sense that like you know it starts off very strong, but later on it, it just it doesn't feel good. And, uh, like, there, there's a lot of things that I, I could talk about, but for me personally, uh, it's chapter 13, which is, like, the second to last chapter. That That's the one which just absolutely killed it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and spoil it, because okay. at this point, at this point right now, I'm like, I don't want to play. I, I'm, so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let everyone out there know that this is gonna be a spoiler. This is probably gonna be it, but, uh, so... Chapter 13, and I heard they tried to patch this or s do something with it, but basically, it's just Final Fantasy 13 in a nutshell. You're in a hallway, and all you can do is just run down the hallway. Grant, there's there's some branching paths, but really, you're just you're going down a hallway. You can't really get off the hallway, and it's really long and tedious, and it's like there's nothing really to break it up. You're by yourself, which really sucks, and you gotta find your friends, okay. which which I guess is kind of nice, but at the same time you're just like you're by yourself you're given this ring that has awesome powers to instant kill enemies oh okay but it takes forever to use really? yeah like you gotta charge it up for instance and then it instant kills enemies and while you're charging it up obviously the enemies can like attack you yeah and it, it's not good and you get like this you get like I think three attacks, and I can't remember what one of them does, but I know one of them's like an instant death on one enemy, and then one's a massive like damage instant death to everything in the room. Okay. Uh, it looks absolutely hilarious because as you're draining enemies like individually, like the, their mass just like starts to shrink, so like uh, their model like kind of starts turning into a wireframe. Okay, but how does that make the the story disappointing? Uh, it's it's just really slow. Okay. It, it just takes forever. It's really slow. You have the main antagonist taunting you throughout it, and it's just like, oh my god, just just hurry up. Just get, just like, hurry this up. Why, why am I taking forever? It's it's an hour in, and I'm, I haven't really achieved anything. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and it's just like, it feels like a grind fest, but you're not really getting anywhere with it. I see what you're saying. Yeah, and you can't do anything. Like, chapter 8... And like a lot of the chapters before that, you had this massive open world that you could explore and you could have a lot of fun with. And you could go traveling around and just like attacking monsters. And that's fun. That's where the fun in the game is, you know. Like, I actually had a good time playing that. Uh, all I'm saying is like, if you're going to play the game, I'm not playing it for the for like the story. Nah, I gotta be honest. It's not a game I'd play for the story. It's the game that I'd play for the exploration and like a lot of the other chapters. Yeah, I play I play games for a good story. Yeah, okay. So. It, it's, it, it probably wouldn't be your cup of tea. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. And, and, and I want to be clear. I'm, for anyone who's curious, I'm kind of loose on the term story because as far as I'm concerned, Portal has a good story. But the story is very light. Yeah. So if that makes if that makes sense, it, it's a good story. the The gameplay can be center, like mm -hmm. it is with Portal, if the story itself is intriguing enough. Well, I, I completely understand. Like for instance, there's fear. Like I got enthralled into that game because of the story. Like it's creepy shit, and then you got like this one thing that you don't understand why it's able to do things. Namely, uh, God damn it, I can't remember names. I'm, I'm so like uh, Alma. You got Alma. She's like this creepy girl, but she's got like weird powers, and you're like, why does she have weird powers? And so it's like, you play the game to try to figure that out, and it's great. And, and so it's like, you know, I, I completely understand. I was enthralled. I'm not a huge fan on shooters, but that game, like, for the story, made me keep going. So I, I completely understand what you mean. A story can save a game for a lot of 
things. Yeah, and that's why Persona 4, since it, yeah, might as well lose back around to Persona. <laughs> Persona 4 was such... It's a, you know how Persona is a very story heavy game. No oh, matter yeah. what game you play, it's oh, a very absolutely. story heavy game. Persona four was so slow. I got about halfway through it and it's very repetitive. You don't care about spoilers for Persona Four, do you? No. I mean but, like it's kinda of the same for Persona three. Yeah, Th but that's why I'm understanding. Persona Persona five I won't spoil, but okay. Persona four. Um, there's the big thing is it's um, character development and you guys can see this but i'm putting character development in quotes i'm seeing her do it um but here's the thing the character development so are you familiar with the midnight channel portion of the game yeah it's like the television that they tune into weird shit happens yeah but of whoever is stuck in the tv world and it shows their true selves yeah and then at first they deny it and then boss battle and then they're like you're me and i'm you and i accept myself and all that bullshit it sounds like the five stages of grief sort of and not quite it's no more, i mean it's, like it's more like uh, denial and then acceptance so yeah, the two end parts um and uh that's all the character development you get for each character <laughs> it's kind of odd because it's it's sort of like and it just recycles over and over yeah again. It, it's sort of symbolic of trying to learn to love yourself because you might have that one aspect that you absolutely hate, but in the end, you kind of have to forgive yourself on and that. And honestly, that message isn't bad, but Persona 4 does it so bad and so repetitive. Well, yeah, I mean, like, the whole game is, like, I think we covered this last time we were talking, but it has a very weird tone of, yeah, being Scooby-Doo, you know? Scooby it's a fun mystery! Oh, with man, it's time to split up, gang! Yeah, it's, with lot, the only difference is with lots of murder. There are a couple of fun things I will say about Persona 4. One is that Kanji's world, the the biker dude looking dude. Isn't he gay? There, his thing heavily suggests that he's gay. Yeah, yeah. And that he's ashamed of it. And then. And that's the, really good. I, I've heard like, a lot of praise about that. It's it actually a really hilarious scene though when they're on the school trip, and this is after Kanji's part, and his roommate, his tent, the because they're sleeping in tents, the person he's sharing a tent with, um, like s snores or something, and he's like, I. Can I stay here? And the two guys are like, um, are we gonna be okay? Like he's like he's gonna fondle them in his sleep, <laughs> and he gets really pissed off about it. He's like, I like girls, and <laughs> they're like, oh, he's like, oh, uh, they're saying something. The main character you guys shut off to say, uh, I want to keep my virginity or something. <laughs> Him. And then he's like, fine, I'm going to go sleep in the girls' tent. They have more balls than you. <laughs> <laughs> and he stops off to the girls' tent, but it's dark and the girls freak out and they kick his ass. I believe it. I mean, I'd and freak then, out too if I was a lady. And then they leave him in the tent with the girl they're sharing a tent with because they, they had three to a tent for some reason. Weird. Um, and she's like this really overweight girl who snores really loudly huh. and so he ends up falling asleep and she ends up like holding him while she's asleep he is a teddy bear and they and they end up waking and then she, she wonder like who's makes the big a, spoon she makes um when they wake up he doesn't want to talk about it but, i don't blame him <laughs> but she comes up to them later and is like look last night was great they didn't actually sleep together or anything but she she still hints at it like that last night was great but you're not really my type <laughs> <laughs> um, but if anything, some of the other yeah, it suggests that he's gay, but it doesn't really go all the way. Oh, okay, with that. so it's not like super confirmed. It's just no, suggestive. It, yeah, it's okay. it's suggestive. The same way that um, Naoto, the one with the blue hair, the mm -hmm. detective. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, I, I, this rings a bell, but I'm not like for certain. I I understand, but at the same time, like uh, just just roll with it. Okay, so um. It, she comes across like a boy in the beginning. Yeah, okay, she's like a cross-dresser. And yeah. at the end, don't you get to choose whether, like, you, you you kind of, like, choose her appearance of, like, being more feminine or more masculine? I don't or, think so. Oh. Uh, like, she, she asks you, like, do you like the way that I dress? And, like, depending on your answer, she'll she'll look more, uh, I actually, lady. I didn't get to Nacho's oh, okay. part, so I don't know for sure. Okay, I, th I think that was one of the things. And it was also kind of, like... Hint that that was also kind of like a nice character development, but the problem is it happens so late in the game. Yeah. Yeah. And the the thing with her is, is that hers actually suggests that she's transgender. Yeah. Yeah. But I then think. it doesn't actually go through. But then you have some really cute moments between Naoto and Kanji. 
between the the two characters. <laughs> um, but then, like, they also play up, even though she dresses as a boy and she really hides her feminine features, mm -hmm. it plays up the fact that apparently she has huge boobs. I mean, uh, it's anime, so I can't really tell. I mean, no, for, like for some scene. reason, you can pad the shit out of anime, and it's like, all of a sudden, when they uh, show a little bit of skin, it's like, bam! There they are. It's like, how do you hide those? Yeah. They're that, smuggling that's hams. That's, <laughs> that's basically... Um, I, I'm just I'm just going based off of... Uh, but then, uh, Zero Escape. Four also had a, a co cross-dressing competition, which all the boys had to dress as girls. Oh, that, that's hilarious. Anyways, I, I hate to cut it, but, you know, this is... Oh, yeah, is, we're at, like, 40 minutes. Yeah, so I think this has been a part... It's, it's a very interesting part. I did not expect to rant about Kingdom Hearts, but for what it is, I've said what I needed to say. Same here. Yeah, all right. So without further ado, we're going to end it here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Yeah, do the whole thing. Twitter in the bottom. I, your website is also in the description. Oh, thank you. Yeah, because that's what I do. I'm editing and stuff. Okay, I'm going to head out. This is really it. Bye-bye. お嬢様も12歳になられ、これより新たに左官とカリウドのアルバイトが選べるようになります。好きな守護者、望みの場所を指し示しなさい。確かに記録しましたよ。<笑>